Well, turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Hallelujah. Genesis, chapter 1. Might as well start and begin. We're talking, by the way, for those that wasn't here last Sunday night, you need the CD. My wife has a few more over here. All right? If you weren't here, we changed directions last Sunday night by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to come back to the series we were on, but the Lord directed that this house change directions for a few weeks, and we were talking about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We want to understand the reason that the Holy Spirit has been given unto us. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we're going to be obedient unto the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to be obedient. And so we're talking about the purpose of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit moves and how He works and what He does. All right? And so we're, we're just going to uh, spend a little time in the Word tonight. And we're going to grow out of it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning. In the beginning, I, you know, I love the Word of God. Amen. This is important. Yes. In the very beginning, now God already existed. Yes. So it wasn't His beginning. But in the beginning of time as we know it, this is the Word, God created the heaven and the earth. Before that, there was none. That's right. Wow. Before this moment, there was no heaven and earth, as we know it, but God was. Because God created the heaven and the earth, and look at verse 2, and the earth was, was without form. And we don't have time to go into that. We can get lost in that part of the verse. The earth was without form, and it was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Look at the next part. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You can be seated. Glory to God. I wanted us to see tonight that from the beginning, the Spirit of God existed. Yes, He did. The Spirit of God did not just all of a sudden become one day. He's a part of the triune Godhead. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit was there. Yes, they did. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. And the Spirit of God was there, and according to this, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters in the beginning. So the Spirit of God, some translation says, was brooding over the face of the waters. Like a mother hen broods over her chickens. Broods over. In other words, she's keeping those hands up under her to protect them. The Spirit of God was brooding over what God created. <clears throat> Boy, we can go somewhere tonight. The Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Why? God had created the heavens and the earth. And here are the waters. And the Spirit of God is moving over the face of the waters. Moving over the face of the waters. What you find here is the earth was without form and void. Sounds like a problem to me. Mm -hmm. We have nothing in the Bible that tells us what happened between verse 1 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. All we know is God created the heavens and the earth, and the very next scripture says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Many theologians have said numbers of things concerning this in-between time. I do not believe that God created the heavens and earth without form or void. Because everything He's created has been perfect. That's right. 
If you read the rest of Genesis, everything he created, when he got done creating it, he said, it is good. Yeah. It's good. Amen. But we don't see that right here. Something had to take place. I'm not going to try to guess at it. I don't think it's important. But what I do think is important is the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving or hovering over the earth. Mm -hmm. You are an earthen vessel. Yes. And some of us have been without form and void. Mm -hmm. And some darkness has been hovering over the face of your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow, this is a preach. Yes. And what you don't know is even though all of these problems have been hovering over your life, anybody relate? Amen. Yeah. Even though these problems have been hovering over you, and it seems like no matter where you turn, no matter what you try to do, the problems are there. It's just darkness, 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 darkness. <clears throat> but what you don't know is the Spirit of God is hovering over you. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. The Spirit of God is hovering over your life, just like He was right here. Because the Spirit of God has not left the planet. <clears throat> He's never left. Hallelujah. Never left. Jesus left. But the Spirit of God was here in the beginning, and He's still here today. Yeah. And He's hovering over each and every one of our lives, and He's looking for something. You want to know what He's looking for? Anybody want to know? We're talking about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. What's the Spirit looking for? He was looking for something. Look on. Verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Wait a minute. Did I miss something? There's darkness. The earth without form. It's void. And the Spirit's hovering over it. And all of a sudden, in the midst of all of this turmoil, if you will, God the Father speaks. Mm -hmm. And He says, light. And there's light. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me now. He said, light. And there became light. Why? Because the Spirit was waiting on the Word of God to be spoken so He could bring it to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing's happening today. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God is hovering over your life and He's looking for the Word of God. Yes. Yeah. He's looking for you to speak the Word of God so He can move in your behalf. Some people want God to do some things for them, but they don't understand. All you got to do is speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. And if you'll speak the word that's in unison with God the Father, the Holy Spirit will always move in your behalf. Wow, I don't know about you, but that excites me. Because I now see that God, the Spirit, is waiting on me. Some of our lives could have been a whole lot better for the last 10 years. Some of the stuff we've been going through could have been a whole lot better than it's been till now. But sad to say, the church hadn't taught us nothing. Anybody been taught this before? No. I know. I wasn't taught it either. Except by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Why? Because the Word is real. Yeah. Amen. It's real. Yeah. And we can see the account written in the book of Genesis for a reason. In the beginning this happened. In the beginning of your life, of all of the trouble that you're going through, the Spirit of God is right there hovering, waiting. By the way, the Holy Spirit is attracted to problems. Yeah. <laughs> He's attracted to it. I can prove it. I don't know how I can prove it to you, but I can prove it. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I was in the church early on a Sunday morning, and I was in prayer. I do that every now and then. I, I sneak over. I, I, I just, you know, I came to actually turn the heat on, and uh, the spirit of prayer hit me when I walked in the door. Actually, when I got in the back door, it hit me. And I began to pray. What's the spirit of prayer? That means the Holy Ghost is moving on. That's right. Amen. 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 
I didn't know why, but I knew he wanted me to pray. And so I came on in the sanctuary, and I just began to walk around, and I just began to just pray and just seek God. I said, well, I don't know what you want, Lord, but hey, I'm here. I made myself available. Amen. And as I began to pray, the Spirit of God rose up in me and began to speak some things that I didn't know about. Wow. He began to speak some things that I needed to know. How did he speak it? He spoke through me. He spoke through me to me. It rose up with inside of me was the Spirit of God, and he began to declare some things through my mouth that I needed to hear. And I'm not going to go into no detail. I can't. But I can tell you that what he spoke to me came to fruition that afternoon. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. I'm talking, this was 8 o'clock or so in the morning. And by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it had already come to pass. Praise God. What was God doing? He was telling me a problem. I knew nothing about it. But the Spirit knows about problems. He's looking at problems, and he's right there hovering over your problem, wanting to move in your behalf, but what you have to do is speak the word. Amen. Guess what I was doing? I was speaking the word. God revealed it to me, and then I declared the word over it. I declared the word over it. I didn't go try to solve the problem. I never once tried to solve it. So, brother, didn't the Lord want you to do something? He sure did. Mm -hmm. Speak the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speak the word. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is looking for you to declare the word of God over your situation. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to first, <coughs> no, second Peter. I want to make sure I say you to the right place. <laughs> second Peter, <laughs> chapter one. Hallelujah. How many want to know about the working of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm just laying a foundation before we even get into it tonight. Hallelujah. How long, how long did I preach last Sunday? An hour and a half. I ain't going to do that today. Say it was good. Thank you. I didn't do it intentionally. 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read verse 21. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Hear me now. Prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. In other words, man didn't prophesy because he wants to prophesy. Wow. Wow. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. I know I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I know I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The question is, are you? Amen. You see, I, you got to know for yourself. Yeah. But I know I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and if I'm not careful, I can try to move in the gifts, and it be me, mm -hmm. and not him. Yeah. Amen. The word says, prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. In other words, it's not because I want to do it. I don't prophesy because I want to prophesy. Mm -hmm. I want to be used of God. Please hear me. I want to always make sure that I'm used of God. I want to make sure that anything and everything I do is God doing it. But I don't want to be used just because I want to be used. Amen. Prophecy didn't come because man wanted to be used. Wow. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Only as they were moved. Only as they were moved. 
Now, what you need to understand, and it would take me hours to, to probably unveil this or un unwrap this for you, but in the Old Testament, from the beginning, the Holy Spirit was there, and the Holy Spirit was moving upon the face of the waters, but it goes a little bit further. The Bible lets us know that the Holy Spirit moved upon man. Yes, All through the Old Testament, That's right. he was moving upon men and women. Upon. That's right. Well, let's turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was moving upon. In other words, when prophets prophesied, they prophesied because the Spirit of God came upon them. They didn't do it because they wanted to do it. The Spirit came upon them and they prophesied. Yeah. Chapter 2, Acts, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon them. Ooh. What happened? Sat upon them. Wait a minute. It sounds like the Old Testament. Yep. The Spirit of God was moving all through the Old Testament and He came and He moved upon or He sat upon men and women and they prophesied or they moved and did things in, in God. Yes. They spoke words because the Spirit moved upon them. Yes. Well, here we have an instance where the Spirit of God came in it filled the whole house and it, it, it sat upon them, each of them. Sounds pretty similar to me. But let's look on. It appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Boy, we need some fire today. Amen. Yes, amen. We need some fire. Yes. I'm talking about Holy Ghost fire. Yes, amen. Do you know the Holy Ghost will burn some stuff out of you? Oh, that's another message. I'm not ready to get in that. Read your book. The Spirit of God wants to burn some stuff out of you. Yes. The Spirit of God has a number of names. That's a whole other message. That wasn't where I was going. But he wants to burn some stuff out of us. So the Spirit came upon them like as of tongues of fire. He sat upon them, and verse 4, and they were all filled. Say filled. 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 Who was filled? All. All were filled. Now wait a minute. Does that mean you got a little drink? Mm -hmm. Does that mean they got a little taste of the Spirit? No, sir. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean, in, in, in your Bible, it doesn't say they got just a taste. No. They were filled. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to fill something, you're going to fill it all the way up. Yes, honey. My bottle full? <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. You fill it up. In other words, you don't put a little bit in. You don't get a little bit. By the way, a little dabble, do you? It doesn't work with the Spirit. Right. Some people want a little dab. They want it their way. Yes. You can't have the Holy Ghost That's your right. way. That's right. It's not your choice. That's right. Old men in the Old Testament were moved upon by the Holy Ghost not because they wanted it, not because they were desiring it, because the Spirit came upon them and they were moved by it. Same is true today. You don't give a little taste just because you want a little taste. Yeah. You give him or else. It's all or nothing. Wow. Filled. Well, some of us might need to be filled. Mm -hmm. Paul went a little further. I, I, we're not going to turn over there, but it's Ephesians chapter 5. And he said, be being filled. Yes. Being filled. Chapter 5, Ephesians. Just study that chapter. You'll find mm -hmm. it. Toward the end, about eight, verse 18. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. He was talking to believers that were already full of the Holy Spirit. Be being filled. In other words, you as a believer need to be continually filled and filled and filled and filled. 
But here's the problem. You're only supposed to be being filled because you're giving it out. Yes. You see, you can't be filled if you're already full. Well, this wasn't what I was going to preach. <laughs> we ain't got to no notes yet. I'm just in scriptures. You cannot be filled if you're already full. So you've got to do something with what you get so that you can make room for more. Amen. That's one of the problems the church has had for years. Is we love to come and get filled. Mm -hmm. We love when the Spirit comes on us. You know those services where you just can't help but cry. You just can't help but shake. And you can't help but jump or run or shout. We love those. You know the goosebump services. Yeah. You know what that is? That's the feely service. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now hear me. I have no problem with feeling God. I yeah. love feeling God. Yeah. But do you know I felt nothing this morning? I had no feeling whatsoever this morning. Was it anointed? Yes. Was it powerful? Yes. Yeah, it was the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I know, I've told you before, when I don't feel anything, watch out. Because I've learned it's not about what I feel. I don't have to feel excited. I don't have to feel good. I don't have to feel goosebumps. I don't have to feel the anointing to know the power and the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And so because of that, he moved. People were ministered to this morning. Yes, they did. Yeah. That didn't feel thing. <laughs> Why? Because we walk by faith. Yes. Not by sight yes. or feelings. Right. We walk by faith. And so they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit yes. gave them utterance. But wait a minute. He sat on them first. The Holy Ghost came and he sat on them. Oh, you got to see this. When Jesus came out of the water, he had been baptized in Jordan. And he come up out of the water. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove and sat upon him. He sat upon him. By the way, he never left. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So the Spirit sat upon Jesus in the form of a dove, but he came to the church in fire. Amen. In fire. Why? Because we need it. Amen. We need the fire of God. That's right. We need the burnings of God. Amen. Amen. We need the Spirit to burn some junk out of us. Amen. Each and every one of us, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to John chapter 16. This okay so far? Amen. That was the foundation. The Spirit moved upon them in the past. Now He came in on them. He came and set on them in tongues of fire and He filled them. Filled them. Some of you may have some tongues of fire said, no, you do not. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. But then how do I know if I got fire on? You'll think. You're going to know. Hallelujah. You won't be able to contain it too long. John chapter 16. Look at verse 7. We read this last week, but we're going to read it again. Why? Because it's important for us to understand why we're studying this. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. And I said it last week. I find it amazing that Jesus had to tell his disciples, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> He never spoke a lie. Right. But he had to tell them, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Why was he saying that? He's saying it because he wants them to understand this is important. That's right. This is very important for you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Yes. Jesus told the church it was very important that he leave. He even, if you really look at this, he said, it's better for you. Yes. It's better for you that I leave. It's more profitable for you that I leave. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I think walking hand in hand with Jesus is pretty important. Amen. Yeah. That's pretty important, amen. amen. 
But he told the disciples, it's better for you that I leave. Wow. Why? Here, let's look at it. Because if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. I'm going to send him. Who's the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. The Comforter. He said, if I leave, then I can send the Comforter. That's what happened on, in the book of Acts. The Comforter came. Amen. He not only came and sat on them like he did in all the years. Look now, we're talking 4,000 years. For 4,000 years, the Spirit of God would come and sit upon man. 4,000. The whole time, wanting to do what he did in the book of Acts. Ooh. Failed them. Wow. Oh, I, 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 can't even, I can't even get into the fact that what the Spirit of God is trying to do is return you to the garden. Amen. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. That's another message. That's right. <laughs> That's a good one. The purpose of the Spirit of God coming and moving inside of you is to return fellowship with God. Amen. Why? Because in the garden, Adam walked with God. In the cool of the day. Woo. There's nowhere in the Bible that you can prove that Adam ever heard the voice of God. But he walked with him. He walked with him. Why? Because he knew him. The spirit was in him. He'd been breathed into him. So the Spirit of God in the book of Acts came back in man to restore us to fellowship with God so we can know Him, we can walk with Him, we can talk with Him without hearing an external voice. Amen. That's why today somebody says, well, God told me. And you look at them, well, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Yeah, you can be standing right beside the person and they'll tell you, God told me this or he told me that. And then you look at them like, well, I, no, I did not. Maybe you need to listen. That's right. He's speaking. He's speaking. But maybe you need to let the tongues of fire come in. Let him in. Amen. Mm. So Jesus said it is very expedient. It's very important for you that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can come within you. So he can come to you. And the Webster's Dictionary says expedient means suitable for achieving a particular end. Mm. In other words, Jesus knew the plan of God was for the Holy Spirit to come in man. Amen. It's been the plan all along. By the way, God had his plan before the foundation of the world. Yeah. He's not haphazardly doing this. That's right. That's right. He's not just because you just happen to be in the right place at the right time going to move upon you. That's right. He's had a plan all these years yeah. and the plan was for the Holy Spirit to live inside of man so that we could fellowship with Him. Yes, Amen. That's been the plan. John 16, verse 14. We're going to move on tonight. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Last week, we talked about four different things that the Holy Spirit does. And if you got the CD by now, you've had a chance to listen to it prayerfully. And, and you, you've uh, got to look at that. We, we read about how the Spirit of God convicts the world of sin, of, of judgment, and of uh, righteousness. We talked about that. We talked about the Spirit of God brings sanctification into the body of Christ. We talked about the Spirit of God only speaks truth. And we went a little further and we talked about the fact that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So therefore, the only thing the Spirit of God is going to speak about is Jesus. Always. And we elaborated on that. So if you had not heard the CD, you need to get it. Because I spent a little time on it. Amen. The Spirit of God's not going to talk about Dan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Should have been some amen for those that was here last night. <laughs> the Spirit of God is not here to promote Dan. 
He's not here to promote my, my uh, pet peeves or, or my desires or anything that I want to do. The Spirit of God is only going to promote Jesus. Amen. Always. Amen. Only Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we, we, we talked about that in depth. Uh, the Spirit of God never speaks about the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God never talks about the Spirit of God. I'm talking about in a, in a word. I'm not talking about preaching. This is different. This is expounding on the word. That's a different anointing. But the Spirit is not going to give a message and talk about himself. That's right. He's going to talk about Jesus. Amen. Always. Amen. So we talked about all this last week. So now in John chapter 16, verse 14, the verse says, He shall glorify me. Who? Jesus. Jesus. The Spirit of God has come to glorify Jesus. Well, I can go right back to what I just said. He's not here to glorify me. That's right. He's not here to pump up my ego. That's right, amen. He's not here to make me feel good, even though we like that. Come on. Amen. Everybody likes to feel good about themselves. Everybody likes to feel that what they're doing is right and that it's godly. But he's not here to pump your ego up. He's here to glorify Jesus and Him alone. Yes. Amen. Let's look on. For He shall receive of mine, and He shall show it unto you. So what's the Spirit of God going to do? He's going to glorify Jesus, and He's going to take what Jesus has, and He's going to give it unto you. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah. The plan and the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to take of Jesus and give it to you. Take of Jesus and give it to you. Take of Jesus and give it to you. Wait a minute. That sounds like I can have what Jesus had. <coughs> That's right. I can have what Jesus had. And then what he said? He's going to receive of mine or of me what he has, what, 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 what uh, Jesus has been given by the Father. He's going to take of mine and he's going to show it unto you. Amen. I, I, I dare say some of us need to ask what we're seeing. Amen. I'm talking about the body of Christ right now. Amen. So the body of Christ needs to examine what they see right now. Because a lot in the body of Christ see doom and gloom. Yes. I've told you for the whole time I've been here, I do not see doom and gloom. Amen. I see the favor of God. Why? Amen. Because I see what Jesus sees. That's right. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's taking what Jesus has and he's showing it to me. Jesus always sees favor. Amen. Amen. By the way, Jesus always sees addition, not subtraction. As a matter of fact, he sees multiplication. <laughs> so the plan of God is not that one and one become two, but that one and one become four. Oh, well. He wants to multiply things. In other words, his way of doing things is totally different than your way of doing things. Well, that's another purpose of the Holy Spirit. I ain't got to that one yet. He's going to show you the things that are mine. Now, go to verse chapter 15 real quick. By the way, we're going to look at a lot of scripture tonight, so I hope you're ready. Chapter 15. Verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. When the Comforter or the Holy Spirit is come, whom I will send unto you, where from? The Father. God the Father wants you to have the Holy Spirit. That's important. God the Father and Jesus want you to have the Holy Spirit. He said, when the comforters come, whom I'm going to send unto you from my Father, even the Spirit of truth, which we've already talked about, which proceeds from the Father, then that Spirit will testify of me. Wow. Wow. So here we are again. The Spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, is not going to testify about Dan. That's it. He's not going to do it. He's not going to testify about your church. Amen. He's not going to do it. 
He's going to testify about Jesus. This is the word of God. Now, I can do anything I want and try to make it sound like it's the word, but the word is the word. The word of God is the only thing that matters. The only thing. And if you deviate from the word, you know, we take the book of Revelation, chapter 22, the very, about the last two or three verses. He said, anybody who adds thereto or takes away from this book shall have his place in the lake of fire. Amen. But I got news for you. You can't add or take away from any of the word. That's right, amen. If you want to take the word and try to twist it around and make it fit your little personal pet peeve, you got problems. Amen. The word is the word. Amen. And you're not allowed to mess with it. That's right. Amen. You're supposed to work with it. Amen. With the word. Amen? Amen. So the Spirit is going to come and he's going to testify of Jesus always. He is not here to promote your favorite ministry. Amen. There's some good ministries out there. Really good ministries. But the Holy Spirit's not here to promote that. That's not his purpose. Does that mean God won't promote ministries? I didn't say that. God does promote ministries. How does he promote them? By them walking and living as Jesus. If you walk and live as, as Jesus, if you're doing the works of Jesus, you're automatically promoted. Automatically. Yes, amen. You don't need somebody to hook you up. Right. You don't need somebody to say, oh, look at this mighty man of God. Amen. It is warm in here. <laughs> Can we turn the fans off? No ministry, if it's truly of God, needs somebody to promote it. It'll automatically be promoted. Automatic. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in the middle of a revival. Amen. Amen. We're in the middle of a revival, in the beginning of a move of God in this community, but I don't have to pump it up. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to pump it up. Why? Because it's going to automatically be pumped up because it's of God. It's automatically promoted because it's in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 15. I want to make a statement before you read. The purpose of the Holy Spirit actively working in your life is to reveal Jesus Christ both to you and in you. Amen. All things that the Father hath are mine. Whoa. I like that. Did Jesus say what I think he said? All things that the Father has are mine. Wow, that's a bold statement. No wonder they wanted to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. No wonder this religious people wanted to kill him. He said everything that God has is mine. That's a bold statement. Boy, if we said that today, the church would get upset. Religious folks get upset because you'd say that what God has is yours. Jesus said it. He didn't back down. He said, all things the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I unto you that he shall take of mine and shall what? Show it unto you. Whoa, wait a minute. So what is he going to show you? Everything Jesus said is his. The Holy Spirit's going to show unto you. Wow. So what did Jesus said was his. All things the Father hath are mine. All things the Father hath are mine. This is Jesus. And he said, because they're mine. That's what therefore means. All things the Father hath are mine. Therefore, or because of this said I unto you, he's, the Holy Spirit is going to take of what's mine and he's going to give it unto you. Brother Randy, the Holy Spirit is giving you what Jesus got from the Father and Jesus got everything from the Father. Amen. Everything. Amen. 
Therefore, Toy is healed in the name of Jesus. Why? Because everything that Jesus got from the Father is ours because He gave it to us by the Holy Spirit. If Jesus could speak healing, we can speak healing. So we speak healing on her. Amen. Wow, this is powerful. Amen. This is so powerful. Everything the Father has, hear me now, not what He had, what He has. Everything the Father has belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Belongs to Jesus. Brother Don, we're in verse 15 of, of chapter 15. I think it's 15. I mean, no, it's 16. 16. All things that the Father hath, Jesus said, belong to Him, and the Holy Spirit takes it, and He gives it unto you. So the Holy Spirit's going to do what? He's going to reveal unto you everything the Father gave to Jesus. Yes. That's His purpose. Yes. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. He's a revealer. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So what all did Jesus get from the Father? Everything. Everything. That's what the scripture said. Everything. Matthew 28 verse 18. You don't have to turn there because we've already went over it numerous times over the last three months. Jesus said, all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. All power. Amen. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's going to take up what's mine, and he's going to give it to you. So what does Jesus have? All power in heaven and in earth. Gives it unto you. Now go. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That changes things. Amen. This is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what you feel when you talk, when you think about God and think about your relationship with Him, but the Holy Spirit gives you power. Power. He's a revealer of the power of God. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We, we, we read this scripture, well, I don't know if we read it or not last week. We were close if we did. Chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. What? This is by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. This was written. We have received not the spirit of the world. Well, what's the spirit of the world? Well, turn real quick. We're going to come back to this, so keep your finger there. But turn real quick to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Anybody learn anything? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about what you need to be able to live the godly life. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, just a few pages over. Verse 3, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost. That's why you can tell people about Jesus and they don't know what you're talking about. That's right. Hear me? You can tell people all day long that they need Jesus. Or you can tell them what Jesus has done for you. And they just look at you like a deer in headlights. They ain't got a clue what you're talking about. Why? Because the gospel is hid to them. Therefore, some of your loved ones, bless you, therefore, some of your loved ones that you've been praying for, trying to get saved, don't understand what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, they think you're crazy. I'm going to let you love them. That's right. Amen. Victoria? Jesse probably thinks you're crazy. Amen. He probably thinks you're crazy. Why? Because she's trying to serve Jesus. The people who are not totally in love with Jesus, and he's, I I shouldn't probably say that because he does love you. He just ain't learned how to walk totally with you. Really? He was. 
Was he coming? It's okay. The Spirit's working. Spirit's working. But you see, the, the people that are lost, they don't understand Jesus. That's right. They don't understand why you're so elated about him. They don't understand why you want to go to church all the time. They don't understand it. They look at you like, what in the world is wrong with you? They think it's boring. He said, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Look at verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Who did? The God of this world. The God of this world has blinded their minds. So your loved ones, their minds have been blinded. They can't see Jesus. They can't see what you see because they got a veil over their face. They're blinded to the things of God because they're lost. The God of this world has blinded them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's why they're blinded. So the devil's doing his work. He's blinding their minds. You want to get your loved ones saved? Get their eyes open. Amen. Well, brother Dan, I've been preaching to them. I did not say preach. That's the worst thing you can do. Right. You need to hear this. The worst thing you can do is preach to them that they need Jesus. They already know it. Whether they want to admit it or not, they know it. Amen. Amen. You're going to get their eyes open not by preaching to them, but by living the life. Amen. Amen. Walk the life in front of them so their eyes can see Jesus. They got to see him. And until they see him, they're not going to understand what they're missing. That's why the word of the Lord to you this morning was, your family is going to be ministered to by you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because as they see Jesus in her or in you, then they're affected because they can no longer say, I don't see it. That's right. But also, you can pray for their eyes to be open. We pray for them to get saved. You don't need to pray they get saved. You need to pray their eyes get open. Why? That the veil, the blindness from the God of this world be removed Ooh, yes. so they can see the glorious light of God. Yes. Why? Because once they see the glorious light of God, they change. But you can tell them all day long. They won't see it. They won't see it. They won't see it. That's why, and, and, and as we get into the, the, uh, the New Testament, Paul was trying to admonish the church, and he was telling women how to get their husbands saved. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. You will win them how? By your conversation. Amen. Godly women win their husbands by their conversation. What do you mean? You're not preaching at them. You win them because your whole conversation changes. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't act like you used to act. Amen. You're not trying to force them to get anything. Remember what I said last night? Women are like the Holy Spirit. They're a powerful influence. You want to influence your husband, your man? You do it with your conversation. That's right. My wife can make me melt. Look at her grin. <laughs> My wife can honestly make me melt by loving me. She can make me want to do things for her that I really don't want to do. <laughs> I'm just being honest. She can get me to do things by loving me. You know what she does every now and then? She starts talking about how great I am. Mm -hmm. I ain't done nothing different. Oh, you're such a good man. Don't you? She does it. I'm just telling you. you, you she, she'll start talking about, you take care of all my needs. She works two jobs. But she'll talk about me taking care of, three jobs, I'm sorry. <laughs> but she'll talk about me taking care of her needs. Being a good man, a godly man. What's she doing? 
She's getting me to line up. <laughs> what you need, honey? Amen. So women are going to win their husbands by their conversation. Amen. By the conversation. She knows she wants to get me to do something. The easiest way is just butter me up. Amen. Talk good. Amen. The same is true with the ungodly. The same is true with ungodly. You know your husbands want to know that you really love them mm -hmm. like they are. Wow. <laughs> they really want to know it. Amen. Husband, oh boy, I didn't put him go here. Right? <laughs> Husbands have ego trips. Oh, amen. <laughs> yep. Men need to be puffed up. <laughs> they need women to tell them how good they are. Yes. Remember, I talked last night about we men men rule by position and title. Well, some of that is you recognizing their position and their title. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, you're just recognizing it. Well, how did we get on this? So, the God of this world is, I'm going back to the message. The God of this world is blinding the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, meaning Jesus, would shine unto them. Okay, now flip back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We were in verse 12 and we had to take a detour. So we're going back to verse 12. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too long. I don't even know how to start it. Verse 12. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. In other words, you didn't receive the spirit that's blinding the eyes of man. You did not receive the spirit that is contrary to Jesus Christ. Wow. Because the spirit of this world is contrary. The spirit of this world is the opposite of the spirit of Christ. Contrary. You did not receive that spirit... We received, look at the verse, the spirit which is of God. Wow, that's good. You've received the spirit that's of God. Say that with me. I've received the spirit of God. I receive the spirit of God. Not the world, but God. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know something. So wait a minute. The spirit of God has come in you so you'd know something. Wow. How many want to know something? Amen. You really want to know something? Let's look at what he said. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God wants you to know what he's given you. Free. You don't work for it. You don't uh, have to beg for it. You just receive. It's freely given. If I walk up and give you a check for $500 or $1,000, do you have to do something for it? Come on. Just take it. Just take it. But yet, God's given us so many things, and we're having a hard time taking them. You know, we take the things of God like a pill. Sometimes it's hard to swallow. That's right. That's how we take the things of God. It's a free gift, but we're choking on it. We're choking on the free gifts of God, and we wonder why we're not doing more for Him. We're choking on the free gifts. God by the Spirit, because you've been given the Spirit of God, which is going to do what? Who is going to give you or that you might know the things that are freely given to you by God. That's a purpose. That's a purpose. So the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal the things that God gives you
John chapter 14. And I'm going to try to sum this up tonight. We didn't get far. But that's okay. Has it been good? Amen. Amen. John 14. I think we read this a couple Sundays ago in the morning service. I think. John 14, verse 8. Philip saith unto him, unto Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. <clears throat> show us the Father, and it'll be more than enough. Just show us God. How many could actually fit into that today? Mm -hmm. Just show me God. It'll be enough. Just show me God. You know, people want to see God. They want to see Him. No different today than it was then. No different. People think that if they could see God, their whole life would change. So here He is. Philip says, Lord, show me the Father. And it'll be, it'll be enough. Matter of fact, it'll be more than enough. And look what Jesus said in verse 9. And Jesus said, have I been so long time with you, and yet you don't know me, Philip? Mm. Have I been so long time with you, and you don't know me? After three and a half years of walking with him, Jesus said, Philip, you still don't get it. I'm going to go a step further. After 30 years sitting in the church pew, you still don't get it. Amen. Because we're still looking for the Father. The church is still looking for God. Wow. Oh, you know, when, when the Lord gets ready, we'll have a revival. When the Lord gets ready, we'll see a move in this church. <laughs> Lord's been ready a long time. As a matter of fact, the Lord says, but when you get ready, we'll have a move of God. Right. When the church gets ready, I can do something with them. Amen. Amen. By the way, the Bible says that the bride will make herself ready. Amen. Wow, we could go somewhere tonight. Amen. The bride's going to make herself ready for his appearing. Amen. You're looking for God? Get ready. Jesus said, have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me. Who? Jesus. Wow, what a statement. Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how say you then, show me the Father? Wow. Yeah. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. By the Holy Spirit revealing Jesus, he is, a, is in turn also revealing the Father to us and everything the Father has freely given to us. Amen. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> I'm not sure it went over because I heard one amen. By the Holy Spirit revealing Jesus, I need to see Jesus. By the Holy Spirit revealing Jesus, He is in turn revealing the Father to each and every one of us, as well as everything the Father gave to Jesus, which is now given to us by the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Jesus was saying, it is impossible to see Jesus and not see the Father. Mm. It's impossible to see Jesus and not see God. It's impossible. Why? Because in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, you don't have to turn there, but it tells us that Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. Amen. He's the express image of the Father. Yes. Express means to be the specific, exact, precise image of God. Wow, the Holy Ghost said that. Mm -hmm. That Jesus is the express image of the Father. Why? Because the Holy Ghost moved upon them and they wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Jesus is the express image, the specific, exact, precise image of God. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. Why? Because if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Oh boy, I don't have time. Who wants to be taught tonight? Amen. Can I go into this? <laughs> I've shared it with you already. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. When you become one, you can't separate them. That's right. If you see my wife, you see me. If you see me, you see her. Why? Because we're one. Two become one. Two become one. Yet she still exists and still I exist. But we're one. Amen. We're known as the Durbans. Right? Yeah. Are we proud of that? Okay. We are one. We became one. Two became one. Yes. But yet, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Amen. They're one. Yet, yeah, here's God, here's Jesus. But they're one. They're inseparable. Amen. Inseparable. I know there's God the Father. I know there's God the Son, Jesus. But yet, they're one. Amen. If you see God, you have to see Jesus. Amen. That's why I said if you see me, you have to see her. Or one. If you see God, you have to see Jesus. Also, if you see Jesus, you have to see God. The Holy Spirit reveals the oneness of the Father and the Son. Amen. He's constantly revealing they're one, they're one, they're one, they're one. That means they're equal. Mm -hmm. right. If my wife says something, it's as though I said it. Amen. If I say it, it's as though she said it. Amen. We're one. Maybe that's why you didn't second guess me a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was another meeting. <laughs> they're one. I'm going to hurry. Is it okay? I've got to finish this. 1 John chapter 3. This is very important. I can't leave you right here. You've got to get this next part. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Jesus and the Father are one. They're inseparable. They're equal. 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments, God's commandments, dwells where? Where? He that keepeth his commandments dwells in him, and he in him. Whoa. Wait a minute. Where did they dwell? In each other. They dwell in each other. <clears throat> so not only does the Holy Spirit come to dwell in you, but you begin to dwell in God. Hallelujah. You want to talk about living above sin? Mm -hmm. You start living what I'm talking about. Yes. You'll no longer want to sin. Glory Hear me now. The desire to sin will no longer be in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. He that keeps his commandments dwells in him or in God and God in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. So the Spirit of God has come to reveal to us that God lives in us. Yes. Amen. I'm going somewhere. Turn real quick to chapter 4 of this same book. This is just a second confirmation. Verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him. You want to know if you're in God? Anybody want to know? Mm -hmm. That you're dwelling in God. Hereby we know that we dwell in God and He in us. Oh boy, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Mm -hmm. 
This is the second scripture saying the same thing. Hereby we know that we dwell in God, and God dwells in us because He's given unto us His Spirit. Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is given, or a purpose of the Holy Spirit, is to assure us that Jesus Christ abides in us, and we abide in Him. Amen. The Holy Spirit is given to assure us that Jesus Christ abides within us and we abide in Amen. Him. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is in us, God the Father, all of heaven and earth, as well as every demonic spirit known to man, sees Jesus when they look at you. I gotta say it again. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Say, I got the Spirit in me. I got the Spirit in me. I got the Spirit in me. I got the Holy Spirit in me. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. God the Father. Who? God the Father. All of heaven and earth. Meaning all angelic creatures. And everybody on the face of the earth, as well as every demonic spirit, sees Jesus when they look at you. You want to know why they're afraid of you? You want to know why devils attack you? That's what was going on with Toya a while ago, and that's what we was talking about. That's why the devil's attacking, is because the devil sees Jesus. The Holy Spirit assures us not only that we're born again, so many people are just satisfied that they're saved, but that's not the purpose of the Holy Spirit, Amen. just to let you know you're saved. It's important to know you're saved, but that's not the entire purpose. The Holy Spirit is not only that to show us or assure us that we're saved, but that we have become one with Jesus. Amen. For the sake of the religious, I'm going to clarify something. I just said the Holy Spirit's purpose is to let you know you've become one with Jesus. Amen. Wow. You're one with Jesus. If the Spirit of God is in you, He's there to tell you that Jesus is in you and you're in Him. That means you're one. Wait a minute. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Therefore, they're inseparable. I and the Father are one. Therefore, they're inseparable. But yet, you and Jesus have become one. You and Jesus have become one. Well, Brother Dan, I don't know if I believe that. Well, believe what you want. (laughs) But you're wrong. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the head and you're the body. The problem in the church is we've decapitated the body. We've cut the head off and separated it from the body. We don't want to associate ourselves as being one with Jesus because that brings responsibility. I told you I said something. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to reveal oneness. The oneness of Jesus with God and the oneness with you, the church, with Jesus. Therefore, when you speak, devils listen. The religious have constantly been keeping Jesus apart from the body. They're constantly saying, Brother Dan, don't you think too highly of yourself. Don't you talk like that because that's sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. Really? He said he's the head and I'm the body. I didn't say it. He said it. And if I'm the body, then I have to be one. That's right. I can't be a part of the body if I'm not one. My toe is still part of my body. That's right. 
Even if it's severed, it's still a part of my body. Oh. There's some people been severed. They still belong to the body. That's right. Wow, that's another message. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is revealing the oneness of Jesus and the church. The devil does not want you to understand what it means to be one with Jesus. Jesus understood what it meant to be one with the Father. Therefore, everywhere he went, he spoke as the Father. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to try to close. I'm trying to land. Everywhere Jesus went, he did what the Father did, and he said what the Father said. Amen. Therefore, you are one with Jesus. Therefore, everywhere you go, you're supposed to say what Jesus says. And you're supposed to do what Jesus does. What does Jesus do? And what does Jesus say? He says what he hears the Father say. And he does what he sees the Father do. So therefore, we do what Jesus does, which is what God does. You cannot... I'm going to close. I got more, but I'm going to close. You cannot separate Jesus from the church. Amen. Amen. You cannot separate it. The problem is the church wants to keep us little. Yeah. They want to keep us in our place. Mm -hmm. That's called religion. Mm -hmm. right. Why is the church not doing the acts of God? Because we're trying to keep ourselves apart from Jesus. We're afraid that if we say I'm one with Jesus, then I'm trying to take his place. Did Jesus ever take the place of God? No. no. He revealed him. Hear me? Mm -hmm. Everything Jesus did revealed the Father. Yes. But how did he do it? He spoke. He spoke. But he spoke as the Father. Therefore, you, when you speak as Jesus, you're not revealing yourself. You can't. You can't reveal yourself if you speak as Christ. So when you speak, you reveal Jesus. Hallelujah. When I open my mouth, I open it to do what? Reveal Jesus. Yeah. Reveal Jesus. Yeah. Reveal Jesus. When I lay hands on the sick, I'm doing what? I'm revealing Jesus. I'm revealing the will of God the Father because Jesus did what God wanted done. Therefore, we do what God wants done. Yes, because we amen. see Jesus do it, we do it. Yes, amen. This is a very simple thing. I'm quiet. But I know I got your attention. This is a very simple thing to do what Jesus you don't try. You don't try. The church has tried to be the church for too long. Mm -hmm. But they tried to do it separate. Come into oneness. Yeah. Embrace your oneness with Jesus. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus said, oh boy, I'm about to preach another message. <laughs> Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Who is? Well, isn't Jesus the light of the world? Amen. Yes. Therefore you are. Amen. What? Jesus is the light of the world. Therefore you're the light of the world. Right. Why? Because we're one. That's right. You're the salt of the earth. Because Jesus is the salt of the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's time. I'm going to throw it at you real quick. It's time. For the church to get in unison with Jesus, who's in unison with God. Amen. God the Father said, I am that I am. I didn't plan to say this. God the Father told Moses, who do, Moses said, who do I tell him sent me? I am. I am. God revealed himself as the great I am. Yes. Well, I can say that now. <laughs> Jesus came. And revealed himself yes. as I am. Amen. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. 
I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Wow. There's more. We forgot them. There's a couple more. What? Yeah, before Abraham was, I was. I am. Yeah, there's still one more. But what did Jesus do? He came and did what God did. God revealed himself as I am. Jesus revealed himself as I am. Paul said it this way. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. But you need to take it a little bit further. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm victorious. Yes. I am the light of the world. Why? Yes. Because he's the light of the world. Yes. Amen. You need to come into unity with what God the Father has been saying all along. And when you become uni unified with Jesus, you become unified with God. Then when you speak, all of heaven and earth has to stand still yes. and listen yes. to the words that yes. you say. Some miracles. Yes, I'm not talking about just doing miracles for miracles. I'm talking about actually walking and living and talking like Jesus. Yes. Then you're going to do it by becoming one. Yes. Becoming one. Wait a minute, Brother Dan. How do I become one? You already are. Yes, amen. You just didn't know it. The devil's had the, the church deceived for 2,000 years. Yes. They've lost sight of their oneness with Jesus. The early church knew it. Therefore, miracles fall. But once you know who you are in Christ, I'm one with Jesus. I'm one with Jesus. I'm one with Jesus. I'm one with Jesus. One with Jesus. Therefore, when I speak, he speaks. Now hear me. I'm not going to speak anything I want to speak. Hear me. I'm not going to be speaking anything I want. I'm going to speak what I hear him say. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak what I hear him say. What's he say? What he hears the Father say. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, I know that I have the petitions that I've asked of him. Because I speak what he says. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready for a change? Amen. 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 I'm ready. The church has needed this for so long. But I've got to tell you one thing as I close. I can't make you walk in it. I can bring it to the table. I can bring it to you. But it's up to you to grab a hold of it. It's up to you to dig in the Word to find out that what I just told you is real. Mm -hmm. Don't go out of here and say, Brother Danny said, I'm going to Jesus. Therefore, I am. <laughs> you need to know it. Well, well, Brother Dan, what, why not? You just told us. I know. But you've got to know it. That's right. If you don't know it, devils don't tremble. Sickness doesn't flee until you know you're one with Jesus. I know I'm one with Jesus because I'm blood bought. My sins have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been cleansed from all unrighteousness. Because of the blood. Yes. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm one with Jesus because his spirit lives 